Hi, good afternoon my dear students. I am Mrs. Jessie for class 10 biology classes. I am extremely thankful to our dearest principal, Sister Kamala, for giving us this chance to handle our students' preparations for their future in this manner. My topic, I am going to start now. First of all, my dear children, let me ask you a question. Which are those various factors that the living things need on a daily basis to survive on this earth? Of course, your answer will be food, water and air. You know, without these three things, the living things cannot survive. Now, my second question to you is, how do organisms procure their food? Can you name the process? Yeah, it is nutrition. So, I introduce the topic to you that is nutrition, which is a life process. It is a life process because it helps the organisms to sustain their life. Now, let us define this process nutrition. It is a biological process by which all living organisms get their food and derive energy from that. I repeat once again. Nutrition is a biological process by which all living organisms get their food and derive energy from that. All living organisms get their food and derive energy from that. You understood? I hope. Now, question comes, why do organisms require energy? Because you know, already I told you that they need food and because uh, uh, they have to derive energy from that. So now the next question is, which, uh, what are the various purposes organisms require energy? Yes, you know, from the lower classes you had been learning, organisms need energy to grow. They need energy to grow. They need energy or food to grow or uh, then to develop. Energy or here I can write food also. Grow, develop, to fight diseases. To fight diseases or germs. Then another point is that to repair. To repair damaged cells and tissues. Okay, now my dear children, let us discuss types of nutrition. You must be already knowing there are two types of nutrition. Two types of nutrition. One is heterotrophic and the other is autotrophic okay children uh, let us see now the types of nutrition as you know one is heterotrophic nutrition and the other is autotrophic mode of nutrition now 
if you want to know uh, something about uh, autotrophic mode of nutrition, there are mainly two kinds. One is photosynthesis and the other is chemosynthesis. Okay, now the details of photosynthesis and chemosynthesis, uh, we will do it a little later. But now let us discuss about uh, heterotrophic nutrition. Uh, hetero means uh, others. Trophic means nutrition. Trophic means, yeah. So heterotrophic nutrition means nutrition from some external sources. Under that, there are different modes. One is parasitism. What is the first one? Parasitism. You can see here. Uh, in parasitism, one organism depends on another organism. For example, here, simply you can take one example, organism A. Organism A depends on organism B for food and shelter. One organism, just for example, I took organism A depends on organism B for food and shelter here. The dependent organism, that means here organism B is called host and organism A here is known as parasite. And so this kind of nutrition is known as parasitism, yeah, parasitic mode of nutrition. Uh, now, if you want to know more the details about the parasites or the parasitism, examples, uh, uh, you know, worms. Worms are there. So many worms are there in our elementary canal, like pin worms, hook worms, turp worms, round worms. All these worms are parasites. They depend on us for their shelter as well as food. Since they are living inside our elementary canal, they are, we can say that they are internal parasites. Internal parasites. That means they are living inside our body. Inside our body. At the same time, if there is something internal, also there are something external. So, let us see the examples for external parasites. External parasites, you know, like ticks. Ticks are there. Bed bugs are there. Bed bugs, the insects that live on beds and cots and all. Ticks. Then mites are there on the body of animals and all. And then lice, even on the human body, lies grow. Where there is a dirty hair, dirty scalp. Uh, so, they are all lice. In Hindi you say, Jui, something like that. So, lice. All these are external parasites. Coming to the plants. There is a plant parasite known as Cascuta. Cascuta. Uh, in Hindi it is known as Amarbel. This plant lives on some other plants and derive its nutrition and also its shelter. Okay, now let us come to the second type of heterotrophic mode of nutrition that is saprophytism. Saprophytism. Sapro refers to decaying matter. Decay matter. And so here, uh, this mode of nutrition refers to the type of nutrition in which nutrition in which organisms derive their food derive their food from dead and decaying organic matter. Dead and decaying organic matter. Understood. Saprophytism refers to the kind of nutrition in which organisms derive their food from dead and decaying organic matter. Examples are uh, some species of bacteria and fungi. 
they derive the food in such ma this manner the third kind is symbiosis symbiosis refers to the association or the mode of nutrition in which mode of nutrition in which two organisms are two organisms are dependent on each other depended on each other or they help mutually 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 here means depended on each other and there is no harm at all neither the uh, first organism or the second organism none of the organism is harmed here no harms in this relationship no harm but in parasitism the host organism is always harmed so you can say parasitism is always harmful whereas symbiosis is always a mutual uh, mutually benefited both the organisms are mutually benefited the best example for symbiosis is, uh, is lichen lichen is an association of algae and fungus algae and fungus algae provides food to fungus and fungus provides shelter to algae so that way both are mutually benefited mutually here it means equally okay equally you can take is a uh, uh, rhizobium you know rhizobium you have studied in lower classes it's a uh, bacterium it's a bacterium symbiotic bacteria that uh, lives on the root nodules of leguminous plants So, this rhizobium lives on the root nodules of leguminous plants. It's also a, uh, what to say, the rhizobium is providing nutrition to the plants and the plants are giving shelter. So, you can say there is a kind of association in which both the organisms are equally benefited and there is no harm. And children, uh, one more uh, kind is there, that is the fourth kind we can discuss under heterotrophic mode of nutrition, that is insectivorous insectivorous mode of nutrition in which some plants are capable of performing photosynthesis they are capable of performing photosynthesis but at the same time they are also adapted to trap insects with the special structures formed on their body and trap the insects and digest it with the help of the enzymes produced in their special structures. They have some special structures to trap the insects and uh, those structures release enzymes, digestive enzymes and they digest this insects which they have trapped and digest it and make it as a part of their food. Some of these uh, examples for such plants are pitcher plant. Pitcher plant, sun dew plant, Venus flight trap. These are some of the examples. So that way we have discussed all heterotrophic mode of nutrition. In the next class in details we will be doing photosynthetic photosynthesis which is coming under autotrophic mode of nutrition.